you can see the screen white screen yes sir okay. so in the last class uh, we have talked about the feature extraction techniques uh, in biometrics and uh, we have uh, talked about uh, scale invariant feature transform and uh, some uh, local descriptors okay and due to uh, time constraint uh, as you said in the last class that uh, your nsem exam will start from 11th january so uh, we have to we have to cover the syllabus i mean uh, a few things we have to uh, uh, we don't need to uh, discuss because uh, if, if we discuss uh, more on feature extraction then uh, uh, it will be difficult to uh, uh, discuss other uh, topics like uh, classification pattern classification techniques uh, that uh, we want to uh, discuss today okay so uh, so today uh, we will talk about the uh, pattern classification techniques uh, pattern classification technique okay and some of you are familiar with uh, some machine learning techniques machine learning techniques so can you uh, can you tell me uh, what are the different types of machine learning techniques uh, uh, you are familiar with as some of you are attending the machine learning class so i think uh, some of you will be familiar with uh, machine learning techniques so what machine learning does machine learning techniques does or machine learning algorithm before i talk about uh, machine learning uh, algorithm uh, let me let me classify the biometric systems into three different three different three different functionalities so one functionality uh, may be verification another functionality of biometric system may be identification okay and another we could have another functionality that is called matching okay and all these three functionalities come under recognition problem biometrics recognition okay so and here verification is posed as a uh, two class problem so here we can expect one to one matching will be done in case of identification identification we expect uh, one to many matching will be done okay and in case of matching only the matching proxy only the ma matching proxy is generated and uh, depending upon the matching proximity uh we can tell whether the subject is matching uh, with uh, the intended uh, intended credential or not okay so credential may be anything credential may be voter id card credential may be some id card where uh, where the face image uh, face image will be found okay and that face image will be matched with the uh, stored uh, template and when that uh, matching uh, will be found then the corresponding matching proximity will be generated and depending upon the matching proximity so some person may be uh, entered into uh, the restricted uh, area or restricted uh, can access the rest uh, restricted system 
so here uh, verification is posed as one to one matching or two class problem uh, identification is posed as uh, multi class problem okay so here uh, we can have two class problem or we can have multi class problem so identification is multi class problem okay and uh, we can have a generalized case we can have generalized case so two class problem is binary uh, classification multi class classification and generalized classification okay so in uh, two class problem uh, means uh, for verification if we consider the verification uh, verification in biometrics uh, recognition then uh, for verification what we uh, what we obtain uh, in the output that uh, either the subject uh, subject will be accepted that means the credential credential here means the face face image fingerprint image thumbprint image iris image okay so these biometric credentials may be accepted by the system or rejected by the system so here we can have two different class acceptance okay and another is class c1 is acceptance class c2 is rejection okay so here we can have two different classes so acceptance and rejection therefore verification uh, verification verification can be thought as a binary classification problem or two class problem but in case of identification uh, since there is a one to many matching is done therefore identification is posed as multi class problem okay for multi classification in case of multi classification there will be some unknown uh, unknown sample so if p is some unknown sample okay so p is some unknown sample then uh, unknown sample then p has to be identified correctly okay so since here here p is the unknown sample therefore p has to be identified correctly therefore p will be compared with all the templates uh, in the database or in the training samples then uh, one of uh, one of the uh, template will be retrieved uh, which has uh, got the uh, close proximity with the unknown sample okay so that means the corresponding uh, tem training tem uh, corresponding template from the training set will be retrieved as the close match uh, to the unknown sample okay and that uh, that template uh, the corresponding template uh, will be the close match of the unknown sample okay that means here one to many matching will be done that means many matching means if there are if we consider there are n number of templates in the database then with n number of samples or n number of templates this unknown sample p will be compared okay and uh, after uh, measuring uh, after measuring the distance from the unknown sample to the n number of templates uh, we get the minimum distance that uh, that has uh, given by the uh, that has given by the training tem uh, training template uh, of the corresponding unknown sample okay and that training uh, training uh, template or training sample becomes the uh, becomes the close uh, proximity for the unknown sample okay so here uh, we have, we can have the multi class problem now what is generalized uh, classification so in the generalized classification so first we see how many categories are there if we see that categories means how many classes are uh, there uh, in the given training uh, ex given training set if we see there are c number of if there are c number of training samples okay so if there are c number of uh, training samples are given in the training set so 
there will be c number of classes that means each uh, training samples will have uh, will uh, belong to one class so here c will be, so if there are c number of training samples then we can have c number of classes c number of classes so whatever may be the number of training samples uh, which are present in the training uh, database or training set so depending upon the number of the training samples uh, we can have we can have that much of or that many as training that many of classes or that many of categories uh, in the generalized classification case okay so therefore uh, we can divide uh, the classification problems into three categories so one of the three categories uh, the first uh, the first classification problems may be two class problem second classification problem may be multi class problem and third classification problem may be generalized case or generalized classification now uh, we will start from linear discriminant function now what is linear discriminant function linear discriminant function so if we consider uh, we have a feature vector x and this feature vector is extracted from a fingerprint or face image okay this is called the feature vector d dimensional feature vector we call this x d dimensional feature vector okay that means uh, uh, here uh, we have that d number of attributes okay so d number of attributes uh, means the d number of Uh, we will say that d number of uh, d dimensional feature vector and for d dimensional feature vector this feature vector may be extracted from some biometrics evidence or biometric strain now if we consider the verification problem then uh, either this uh, feature vector of the corresponding subject uh, may be accepted by the system or may be rejected by the system okay since here acceptance is one class and rejection is another class okay and we call this class c1 and c2 c1 and c2 okay that means x may be belong to class c1 x may be belong to class c2 okay now we can write a function of gx equals to wt wt into x plus b okay so this this function uh, this linear function is called the linear discriminant function now in this linear discriminant function what is wt so wt is known as weight vector okay weight vector w wt is known as weight vector okay and here x is the feature vector here x is feature vector okay and what is b so b is known as bias now if we consider since uh, 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 since uh, we are talking about two class problem suppose uh, there is two dimensional data x1 and x2 and for x1 and x2 uh, we can have n number of samples okay there is two dimensional data and uh, suppose we have these are the feature vectors these are the feature vectors from class c1 and these are the feature vectors which are of which belong to class c2 okay which belong to class c2 
now uh, we have to separate the feature vectors of class c1 from the feature vectors of class c2 that means if we uh, if we assign the positive sign to class c1 and negative sign and negative sign to class c2 that means all the feature vectors will have positive sign and all the feature vectors in class c2 will have negative sign that means here positive samples will be separated from the negative examples or negative samples now uh, we have to find a separating uh, separating line so that will uh, that will separate the one uh, samples of one class from the samples of another class okay so if we uh, draw a straight line over here then we can have a class uh, we can have a linear classifier this is called the linear classifier so this straight line will classify the samples of class c1 from the samples of class c2 okay so now uh, in this case this function gx of wtx plus b is known as the linear discriminant function that means uh, we can take a decision with this linear discriminant function so whenever wtx plus b will be found to be greater than 0 that means we can uh, we can say or we can infer that uh, feature vector x belongs to class c1 okay otherwise when wtx plus b will be found to be less than zero that means negative then we can infer x belongs to c2 okay since we are dealing with two class problem so uh, since uh, so there will be uh, two classes c1 and c2 okay and based on this uh, based on this linear discriminant function so when we put our feature vector that has been extracted from some biometrics uh, biometric state okay or biometric systems then uh, we will put this feature vector in this linear discriminant function okay and uh, whenever uh, this linear discriminant functions uh, when we compute the value of this linear discriminant function by putting the feature vector x in the equation then uh, whenever we see that the the value of this function is found to be greater than zero that means the value will come as positive and when the value will come as positive we can infer that the uh, in input feature vector x belongs to class c1 okay so all the samples given in the class c1 uh, given in class c1 is positive okay and all the samples given in uh, class c2 are negative so therefore when the function value is found to be less than zero that means the function value uh, becomes negative then we can infer that x belongs to class c2 okay now when uh, when the feature vector is two dimensional then this linear discriminant function will be straight line that means we can have a straight line and this straight line we can have this straight line and this straight line will separate the samples of class uh, from class c1 uh, so here the samples of uh, class c1 uh, will be uh, separated uh, by this straight line uh, from uh, samples of class c2 okay so whenever the feature vector is two dimensional then this linear discriminant function uh, will be a straight line when the feature vector x is three dimensional then this separating uh, then this uh, uh, then this classifier becomes the uh, classifier becomes plane okay and if we have more than three dimensional uh, feature vector then this linear discriminant function or this linear function becomes a hyperplane okay so we can have straight line we can have straight line we can have plane okay and we can have hyperplane we can have hyperplane so straight line when 
we have two dimensional feature vector so when x is two dimensional feature vector then uh, by putting the uh, feature vector x in the linear discriminant function the linear discriminant function uh, linear discriminant function becomes the straight line so which will separate the positive samples from negative samples okay and when the feature vector is three dimensional let us consider x1 x2 x3 okay so x1 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 x2 x3 are three different attributes or three different uh, three different composition of the uh, same feature set so when we have three dimensional feature vector by putting that three dimensional feature vector in the linear discriminant function the linear discriminant function becomes the plane uh, becomes uh, separating plane that will separate the positive examples from negative examples okay and when we have d dimensional feature vector more than three dimensional okay we simply call this is d dimensional d dimensional feature vector okay and when we have d dimensional feature vector that is more than three dimension then uh, by putting that feature vector in this linear discriminant function the linear discriminant function or the linear function becomes the hyperplane and that hyperplane will separate the positive examples from the negative examples okay so depending upon the depending upon the dimension uh, dimension of the feature vector uh, we can have straight line we uh, plane and hyperplane so for uh, verification problem uh, we can uh, use this linear discriminant function and this linear discriminant functions uh, will uh, separate uh, the one class uh, the samples of one class from the samples of another class okay now suppose uh, uh, in machine learning let us consider the machine learning techniques then we will talk about uh, uh, more on the classification so machine learning techniques uh, we can have we can have a uh, supervised learning technique okay supervised learning technique we can have unsupervised learning technique we can have semi supervised learning technique semi supervised learning technique and uh, we can have reinforcement learning techniques okay so machine learning techniques can be divided into uh, four uh, four groups so first group of machine learning techniques uh, are known as supervised learning techniques second group of learning techniques are known as unsupervised learning techniques and third group of learning techniques are known as semi supervised learning techniques and then uh, we can have uh, reinforcement learning technique now what is machine learning so in the machine learning uh, we provide Uh, we provide the uh, we provide either the level data or unlevel data okay and depending upon that the uh, data uh, so we identify the patterns and uh, we make the decisions and whenever we uh, make the decisions the decisions uh, decisions are ma made without uh, without uh, intervening the human without intervening the human decision okay so minimal uh, human uh, intervention we uh, make this decision that means the machine learning techniques that we use for classification or clustering purpose okay so 
uh, either we can use the machine learning techniques for classification or uh, uh, or uh, clustering so in the clustering we try to identify the patterns uh, for the data set that we have provided to the machine learning algorithm okay so in the supervised learning techniques uh, supervised learning techniques uh, uh, supervised supervised learning techniques take the level data level data means uh, we provide uh, the feature vector xi with the class information yi okay so this uh, yi that, that is the class information is associated with the feature vector let us consider this xi this feature vector is obtained uh, from a fingerprint image okay and the corresponding class level uh, is given so y can have plus minus 1 okay that means uh, some samples uh, belong to the negative uh, uh, positive class and uh, some samples belong to negative class that means this class information will be associated with the given feature vector okay so in the supervised learning techniques uh, we can have the level data level data means uh, we can have the class information uh, class information about the feature vectors and in unsupervised learning te- so what are the different supervised learning techniques that uh, we can have we can have uh, svm the support vector machines okay uh, we can have decision tree we can have we can have random forest okay we can have linear discriminant uh, analysis okay we can have hidden markov model so these are the different supervised learning techniques so this supervised learning techniques takes the level data okay and based on the level data uh, classification uh, is made and uh, classification of the unknown sample is made that means uh, first we train this uh, supervised learning techniques with the large number of uh, samples then there will be some unknown sample okay and uh, when this uh, model uh, model will be built so after uh, making uh, after uh, after uh, training of this uh, t- supervised learning models or supervised learning techniques so we provide some unknown sample to this models okay and uh, based on the uh, based on the feature vector uh, that has been provided uh, for the unknown sample so these uh, models or this learn uh, supervised learning techniques takes the decision and uh, based on the decision that unknown sample uh, will have some uh, class if it is if we consider the classification problem is a two class problem or verification then uh, according to the according to the uh, given data or the data um, the data for the unknown sample uh, has been provided uh, we'll have some class uh, information after the decision okay so th- this decision will be uh, made by this supervised learning techniques or supervised learning models okay now what is unsupervised learning techniques so unsupervised learning techniques takes the unlabeled data that means only the feature vectors xi will be provided okay so basically un- unsupervised learning techniques so most of the unsupervised learning techniques are clustering techniques clustering techniques okay clustering techniques so this clustering techniques basically takes the unlabeled data and try to identify the pattern uh, according to the uh, according to the grouping of the uh, grouping grouping of the samples into different classes okay or different categories so we can have uh, different types of clustering techniques uh, we can have uh, unsupervised learning techniques like principal component analysis we can have k means algorithm we can have hertzsch means algorithm acm okay we can have fuzzy simmons algorithm so these are the clustering techniques uh, which uh, come under the unsupervised learning techniques now what is semi supervised learning techniques in semi supervised learning techniques uh, 
a small number of samples will be uh, will have some labels or the class information and rest of the large number of samples uh, will have uh, will uh, will have no class information okay in case of semi supervised learning techniques uh, uh, there is one uh, one model is available that is called uh, gan okay so gan is a familiar uh, uh, deep learning techniques uh, so full form of gn is generative adversarial network this generative adversarial network uses small number of labeled data and large number of unlabeled data okay so that is why this is called the semi supervised learning techniques so small number of labeled data is used and large number of unlabeled data is used by this generative adversarial uh, network that is why this uh, gn is called the semi supervised learning technique now what is reinforcement learning techniques in case of reinforcement learning techniques when the system interact with uh, some dynamic uh, uh, dynamic uh, interface or dynamic uh, we can say the dynamic framework which provides the system two different uh, decision one is the uh, uh, one is called the penalty okay one is called penalty and another is called award so this the, that dynamic interface or dynamic framework provides these two uh, decisions to the uh, system that uh, that is try uh, that is trying to uh, interact with that uh, dynamic interface or dynamic framework okay and based on this decision the reinforcement learning technique uh, will uh, will generate some uh, will generate uh, final decision so we can have the auto so this automatic car or uh, autonomous car is the example of reinforcement learning okay autonomous car so autonomous car is the example of reinforcement learning okay so as we are talking about the linear discriminant function so linear discriminant function uh, can be uh, used as uh, two class uh, class uh, two class classification uh, technique and in two class classification technique let us consider we have uh, given this training examples which are obtained from multiple number of subjects okay so multiple number of subjects uh, have contributed these biometric samples and uh, these biometric samples will be used to train a classifier okay and this classification uh, will be the two class problem since uh, we are dealing with uh, the uh, verification problem therefore uh, either the uh, either the subject uh, will be verified correctly that means the identity will be verified correctly or the identity will not be verified that means the system will reject that uh, the corresponding subject of the person corresponding uh, corresponding biometric sample of the person okay now we can expect a uh, if with the two if we provide the two dimensional data x1 and x2 and for this two dimensional data we can have a number of uh, number of feature vectors okay so we can arrange this feature vector x1 x1 1 x2 1 okay x1 2 x uh, x2 2 like this okay x1 n x2 n and so on so we can have n number of n number of uh, feature vectors or n number of samples now out of n number of samples some samples uh, belong to class c1 and some samples will belong to class c2 that means some samples will belong to positive class and some samples belong to negative class 
Now, what do we expect from this? So we can uh, expect a linear classifier if we consider, since this is a two-dimensional data, therefore the linear discriminant function becomes a straight line. And that straight line will separate the negative exam, uh, positive examples from negative examples, okay? So all positive examples belong to class C1 and all negative examples belong to class C2. And uh, we expect the straight line, suppose the suppose uh, the linear classifier, that is the straight line is appearing over here, okay? Appearing over here. And uh, as we know that uh, for some feature vector X, we can have the linear discriminant function WT X plus V, where WT is the weight vector and B is the bias. B is bias and WT is the weight vector. Now this weight vector, weight vector, weight vector will make, uh, weight vector will be orthogonal to this uh, uh, straight line classifier, okay? Or if we consider this is the hyperplane, or if we consider this is the plane, then this weight vector uh, will be orthogonal. That means the perpendicular uh, to this linear classifier. Okay, and uh, that means uh, this, depending upon the weight vector, uh, we can have the orientation of the linear classifier. That is the straight line or hyperplane or uh, plane, and this bias B will decide the position of the hyperplane or position of the straight line classifier, okay? So here uh, WT decides, WT decides orientation, orientation of the hyperplane or uh, for d-dimensional data, okay, hyperplane, and bias B will responsible for the position of the hyperplane or position of the linear classifier. So it is responsible for the position of the hyperplane, okay. So now, uh, suppose uh, here we have to, uh, here we have two different classes c1 and c2 and the corresponding uh, uh, corresponding feature vectors of the samples are uh, given uh, over here and uh, we have a linear classifier uh, like this straight line which is appearing uh, in this position okay now here we can see that uh, the nearest feature vector nearest feature vector from class C2, here we have the large bias for class C2, okay? That means we have the large boundary for class C2 and here for class C1, we have the small bias, okay? So we have large bias in favor of class C2. We have small bias uh, in favor of class C1. Okay, that means uh, we are not ex we are not expecting uh, we are not expecting a, a linear classifier like this. Okay, so we uh, we need to have a linear classifier which will be appearing some somewhere over here. Okay, so that uh, we can have we can have the same bias for class C1 and C2. That means uh, we we will have the equal uh, distance or the equal margin from the hyperplane. So we can we have the equal margin from the nearest uh, feature vectors uh, of class C1 and C2. Okay, that means this distance. We try to maximize this distance. That means this line is called the boundary. This is called the boundary, 
okay this line is called the boundary okay this is called if this is the ideal case if we consider this is the ideal case in the ideal case the, so bias uh, bias will be equal or margin uh, this margin uh, will be equal uh, from the feature vectors each feature vectors uh, of class c1 and c2 okay and this is called the hyperplane okay this is called the hyperplane now we want the hyperplane to be uh, to be somewhere over here so that uh, we can have the equal margin from each of the feature vector of class c1 and c2 okay so that means the bias will be same for uh, uh, class c1 and c2 so we uh, so in this in, in this case the margin uh, will be uh, same margin from the boundary that means a uh, distance from the boundary uh, will be so this will be uh, this margin will be same for uh, class c1 and uh, c2 okay so we want the hyperplane to be here some over some over over here so that uh, we can have the um, uh, margin we can have the feature vector in uh, in uh, in the surface distance surface distance means uh, we can have the large distance from the uh, boundary okay so we want the feature we want the uh, feature vectors of class c1 and c2 will have the surface dis distance from the boundary and uh, if we have w t x plus b greater than 0 that means we can infer that x belongs to class c1 okay if we have w t x plus b less than 0 that means we can infer that x belongs to class c2 that means negative class this is positive class this is negative class and we can have another case we can write w t x plus b equals to 0 that means the feature vector the feature vector will lie on the hyperplane okay the feature vector will lie on the hyperplane now uh, now when we design a classifier we have to when we design a classifier uh, we have to use the label data okay since the label data is associated with the feature vector xi so here the label data is yi okay so that carries the class information and uh, we can since we are dealing with two class problem so yi becomes either plus one or minus one that means either positive or negative and this class information will be associated with the feature vector xi okay now uh, we can we can have the linear discriminant functions which will be multiplied by this class information y that means in place of w t x we can write w dot x so both are same w t x okay or w dot x this dot uh, this dot denotes the dot product okay so w dot x plus b so this will be multiplied by yi and what we want that this should this should be greater than zero okay so uh, when yi will be multiplied with w and uh, w dot x plus b so this uh, this will always uh, uh, this will always generate the positive result why because uh, when we take when we take the positive class example or positive class feature vector that means the feature vector which is uh, which belongs to the positive class that means this w dot x plus b will be positive the corresponding class information that is yi will also be positive therefore the yi into w dot x plus b will be positive that means greater than equals greater than zero okay and in case of negative examples that means if the x uh, if the feature vector x belongs to class c2 okay that means w dot x plus b 
will be negative okay and yi will also be negative so therefore when we multiply these two quantities therefore uh, we will have the uh, this multiplication will have the uh, positive result okay that means this yi into w dot x plus b will always be positive always be found to be greater than zero okay now for unknown sample p if we have unknown sample p if we have unknown sample p okay p feature vector then we will put this p in this linear discriminant uh, function so in place of x we will write w dot p plus v and then since here the yi is unknown we uh, we are uh, so p is p is unknown sample okay so p feature vector we will put in this linear discriminant function by putting the linear uh, by putting the feature vector p in this linear discriminant function so we will uh, see what is the sign of this equation linear function okay so wp plus v so it may be greater than it may be greater than uh, greater than 0 or uh, it may be less than 0 when it is found to be greater than zero, then uh, we can infer that P belongs to class C1, that is positive class, or if in uh, the, the value of this linear discriminant function, after putting a uh, feature vector P uh, will be found to be less than zero, then we can infer that uh, P belongs to uh, class C2 or negative class, okay? Now we can uh, we can write the linear discriminant function for feature vector x w dot x plus b. So we can write so w dot x plus b equals to zero. Okay, so w dot x plus b equals to zero means the feature vector is lying on the hyperplane okay now uh, we can write w dot x plus b greater than equals to gamma okay so this gamma is known as margin this gamma is known as margin okay and uh, we can write w dot x plus b by mod w so that to be greater than equals to comma okay now we can write w dot x plus b greater than equals to gamma into mod w okay now we can write one in place of gamma dot uh, gamma into mod w okay so this is a matter of scaling so by proper scaling we can have uh, we can have the one value for gamma into uh, gamma into mod w that means what we are trying to do that if we have a hyperplane that separates the positive examples from negative examples so what we want that uh, within the boundary boundary of uh, boundary for uh, the samples of class c1 and samples from class c2 so we can have this boundary to have the 
safer distance from the feature vectors of class C1 and C2. Okay, and what we want? We want that this margin to be maximized. Okay, so that uh, we can have this feature vector in the safest dis distance. Now, since uh, we try to design a uh, classifier two class uh, for two class problem, and for that we need a large number of samples. Large number of samples means large number of feature vectors that are obtained from some biometric system so or biometric trade okay now after uh, one after another when we uh, when we uh, when we train the when we train the samples one after another with the uh, with the classifier then the, we can build a model okay now for th that model will be used for some unknown sample and uh, in the unknown sample we will use this uh, we will use this uh, W and that means uh, we will compute the w, weight vector W and bias B from the training set. So after calculating weight vector and bias, this weight vector and bias will be used for the unknown sample. And here in this case, initially we will have the we will have the label data, and uh, for each uh, each label data XI. Okay, and this XI is extracted from some biomet uh, biometric uh, evidence. So biometrics evidence may be face, may be fingerprint, may be pump print, may be eyes. Okay, so this feature vector is extracted from, so we can have n number of samples. We can have n number of feature vectors. Now with n number of feature vectors, uh, we will train our, uh, we will train our classifier uh, for two class problem. Okay. Now, if we consider our classification, our classifier is support vector machine. Support vector machine in place of linear discriminant function. Okay. Now, in support vector machine, this support vector may be used for uh, this support vector may be uh, used for two class problem uh, as well as for multi class problem. Okay. And for two class problem, what we uh, what we uh, do, we use this linear discriminant function wx plus b, wx plus b divided by mod w greater than equals to gamma. And this gamma is called the margin. Now we can have the uh, we can have the one uh, one value after uh, scaling of gamma uh, into uh, mod of w. So we can have w dot x plus b equals to one. In case of support vector means since uh, we, when we use this linear discriminant function, okay. So in case of linear discriminant function, we need to check the sign of the, uh, uh, sign of the, uh, sign for the given feature vector. Okay. And for the given feature vector, if the sign is found to be uh, greater than zero, then the, uh, x will belong to class C1, otherwise x will belong to class C2. So this is the uh, this is what we obtained uh, uh, from linear discriminant function. Now we can extend this linear discriminant function for support vector machine classification. Okay, in case of support vector machine, uh, we can use this linear discriminant function and uh, to obtain a support vector uh, machine model. So that uh, model uh, that model use the label data for training purpose. Okay. Now, how this uh, training is done? So, one, if we provide the n number of feature vectors or n number of samples with the class information, then out of n number of samples, there will be a uh, p number of samples will be there. That means the p number of samples with the class information C1 and n minus p will have class information C2. Okay. So p number of uh, samples will have class information C1 and n minus p number of samples will have class information C2. Now, uh, now what we uh, try to obtain here that uh, uh, when we uh, when we uh, when we uh, put uh, when we write one in place of uh, gamma into uh, mod W after uh, proper scaling, then uh, we can have W dot x plus b equals to one now what is w plus w dot x plus b equals to one so this denotes that 
this x will lie on the boundary of the hyperplane boundary of the hyperplane okay if this is if this this line is the hyperplane and these are the boundary okay then this feature vector x will be lie on this boundary that means whether it is positive examples or negative examples so this feature vector or this sample will be found on the boundary of the hyperplane okay that means in that case uh, we will say this feature vectors are support vectors we will call this vector support vectors okay why this is called support vector let me explain here we have feature vectors from class c1 okay this is our hyperplane this is c1 and this is c2 region now the samples from class c1 so here we can see that one sample is there which lie on a boundary of the hyperplane and there are two samples or uh, the two feature vectors uh, are there in class c2 which are found on the boundary okay that means these three feature vectors one from class c1 and two from class c2 so this three feature vectors are called the support vectors because uh, depending upon the uh, depending upon the position of this support uh, support vectors uh, we have designed this classifier okay and uh, some and hyperplane is placed some over over here uh, so that uh, uh, we can have the uh, we can have the margin to be maximized and uh, uh, and uh, all the feature vectors of the samples from class c1 and c2 will be found in safest distance from the uh, from the boundary of the hyperplane okay safest distance means uh, if it is found near to the boundary suppose there is one such feature vector of, of from class c1 is found near to this boundary but this is not on the boundary but near to the boundary but if there is if there is a noise or some disturbance because and uh, which are which is associated with uh, the feature vector with this feature vector then this feature due to the disturbance or due to the noise this feature vector will cross this uh, will cross this hyperplane and uh, it will be found in another class okay then in this case this feature vector uh, this feature vector uh, will be misclassified and uh, since we are uh, since we are uh, uh, since we are going through a uh, training uh, uh training the uh, feature vectors which are obtained from some biometric systems or biometric strip therefore uh, iteratively we have to uh, we have to add up this feature vectors and uh, train uh, train the support vector machine or support vector model so that uh, we can have the hyperplane we can have the hyperplane which has uh, which will maximize uh, the distance which will maximize the distance of the uh, feature vectors uh, from the boundary that means the distance from the uh, distance from the nearest feature vector uh, will have uh, the maximized distance uh, from the boundary and some feature vectors will be found on the boundary and those feature vectors will be called the support vector by changing the position of the support vectors we can have the different uh, we can have different hyperplane and different orientation and uh, as well as the position of the hyperplane will also be changed so uh, that is why these feature vectors are called the support vectors and if we remove non support vector either from class c1 and c2 suppose this feature vector from from class c1 is removed and this feature vector from class c2 is also removed by removing these two feature vector from class c1 and c2 so 
the position of hyperplane will not be changed okay that means this non non support vectors are not responsible for the orientation of the hyperplane as well as for the position of the hyperplanes okay only uh, depending upon the support vector so depending upon the support vector either from class c1 and c2 the position of hyperplane as well as the orientation of the hyperplane uh, will be decided okay now little bit uh, little uh, change of the position of these uh, support vectors will change the position of the hyperplane as well as the orientation of the hyperplane okay so by removing the non support vector uh, non support uh, uh, feature vector uh, uh, so there will no impact on the position as well as the orientation of the hyperplane that means uh, here uh, since here we have obtained w ax plus b equals to 1 uh, for the support vectors now we can write wx plus b greater than equals to 1 now okay greater than equals to 1 means the corresponding feature vector that have been put in this function is found to be non support vector feature vector that means non support feature vector okay non support feature vector that means this uh, this is the uh, pause uh, this example uh, the, this feature vector uh, belong to class c1 okay and if we have another function that is given or that is found to be less than minus 1 then we can infer that ax belongs to class c2 this is also non support vector okay or non support feature vector okay only in case of w w dot x plus b equals to 1 the corresponding feature vector will be called the support vector because of this support vector the uh, position of the hyperplane and orientation of the hyperplane will be decided that means after adding uh, the feature vector 1 by 1 to the training uh, training set uh, we can train this support vector missing for two class problem for classification okay now uh, for every um, after adding uh, after adding the feature vectors one by one in the training set for uh, training of the for training of the support vector machines so every time when we add a new feature vector the hyperplane may or may not be changed okay that means after uh, adding suppose we are uh, we are adding this feature vector so after adding this feature vector still we have the hyperplane at the same position okay that means the position of the hyperplane and the orientation of the hyperplane is not changed so if we found any such feature vector which has been misclassified that means uh, uh, if the w uh, we know the since the class information is uh, provided xi and why i so this why i is provided with the feature vector xi and uh, we know that uh, this xi belongs to class c1 however when the training is done after training we uh, uh, we see that the xi is found in the uh, c2 uh, class c2 region okay so class c2 that means the xi has been misclassified xi uh, xi uh, has been misclassified so therefore what we will do we will modify the weight vector and the bias so we will modify the weight vector and bias such a way that the x uh, that the feature vector xi will be found in the positive class region that is uh, then uh, xi will uh, belong to class c1 okay so we have to modify this uh, w and b and uh, because and because of this modification the position and uh, position and orientation of this hyperplane will be changed that means what what i am trying to uh, say uh, that after after adding every feature vector to the training set for training of the support vector missing the position of hyperplane and the orientation of the hyperplane may or may not be changed okay so whenever it is changed uh, due to that uh, feature vector that feature vector may be misclassified 
and when it is misclassified then we will modify the w and v such a way that uh, the uh, that the classification of the uh, given uh, sample of the given feature vector will be correctly uh, uh, correctly uh, uh, correctly to be associated with the proper class inform okay so it will be uh, it will be classified uh, classified according to the according to the uh, value of weight vector and uh, bias uh, value b okay and not for not all feature vectors the position of uh, position and orientation of hyperplane will be changed but uh, there will be some feature vectors that will uh, and that will try to uh, try to give the impact uh, for the position and orientation of hyperplane okay and the uh, feature vectors which are found on the boundary of the hyperplane then those feature vectors will be called the support vector why it is support vector because uh, based on the support vectors the position and hyperplane of the uh, position and orientation of the hyperplane will be decided as we have obtained uh, w dot x plus b equals to 1 okay and now uh, since uh, we are providing the label data suppose this is xi so w dot xi plus b and this w dot uh, xi plus b will be multiplied with yi okay and now uh, we are saying that yi into w dot xi plus b will be equal to 1 okay and here xi is the support vector here xi is the support vector okay now that means here we have to uh, uh, and this is obtained from this equation so if we try to obtain the margin of the hyperplane or determine the margin of the hyperplane then we can uh, use this formulation w w dot x plus b okay divided by mod w and and which is to be greater than equals to gamma and this gamma is called the margin okay that means here in this formulation we will try to minimize this uh, w okay and try to maximize this b so this is our objective our objective is to the w get to be minimized and uh, bias b will be uh, maximized so we maximize the bias and minimize the w so this is our objective okay uh, uh, when this objective will be uh, uh, this objective will be fulfilled that means uh, then we can have the maximized uh, then we can have the uh, maximize uh, uh, boundary for the uh, for the nearest uh, feature vectors from class c1 and c2 okay since we will uh, minimize the uh, w and maximize bias therefore we can write phi of w equals to wt w w transpose w okay for mathematical convenience so we can add half w dot w w transpose w is equal to w dot w that means uh, here we have the dot product between uh, w and w okay and for mathematical convenience we can add this half before w dot w okay now uh, uh, at the school level uh, Uh, school level mathematics uh, we uh, know uh, from school level mathematics that uh, to minimize this uh, equation we simply we can have the trivial value zero for w 
okay trivial value zero for w but uh, what we want uh, that uh, this equation phi w equals to half of w dot w to be minimized under some constraint okay now we have to we need to uh, we need to identify that constraint under which this function will be minimized okay phi w so phi w as we have uh, written phi w equals to half of w dot w so uh, in other way we can uh, we can have the trivial value okay trivial value zero for the w when it is uh, to be minimized but uh, uh, what we want that uh, this function phi w to be minimized under some constraint okay now what is the constraint the constraint is constant is we will write the expression for the support vector okay so yi this is to be multiplied by w xi plus b equals to 1 this is our constraint so under this constraint we will try to minimize the function phi w of phi w equals to half of w dot w okay so this is the constraint this is the constraint based on based on which the phi w will be minimized okay now we can write another expression which is called the lagrangian expression l of w comma b equals to half of w dot w okay sum of alpha i y i into w dot x i plus b minus 1 from where we are getting this y i into w dot x i plus b minus 1 so we are getting this from this constant that means if we if we take this one on the left hand side okay that means we can write y i w dot x i plus b minus 1 equals to 0 okay so here uh, we are uh, we are having alpha i summation of alpha i into y i into w dot x i plus b minus 1 okay and here alpha i is known as lagrangian lagrangian multiplier lagrangian multiplier okay now we will uh, now we will expand this uh, equation and uh, from this equation uh, and uh, since in this equation lagrangian expression l of w comma b in the l of w comma b in terms of w and b because we try to minimize the w and maximize b, uh, maximize the bias and when we will maximize the wire, that means the margin will be maximized. And when the margin will be maximized, the nearest feature vectors from class C1 and C2 will have the safest distance from the boundary of the hyperplane. That is why, in terms of W and B, we are try to we try to uh, express uh, this function uh, with the help of Lagrangian multiplier okay so here we have uh, we have uh, we have considered the lagrangian expression l of w comma b okay and here we have written the expression and uh, here we multiply alpha i uh, with the uh, with the constraint y i into w dot x i plus b minus 1 okay now when uh, since since l of uh, l of w comma b is the lagrangian expression and this Lagrangian expression will be minimized in terms of W and maximized in terms of B. That means when this expression to be minimized or maximized, so what we, ne we need to have the derivative. Okay, we need to have the derivative uh, with respect to W. I will need to have derivative uh, with respect to uh, bias. Okay, so we will have, we can write DL by dw okay and in another case we will have dl by db 
okay and when this derivative uh, will be uh, when this derivative uh, with respect to w and derivative with respect to b uh, will be determined then uh, we will equate uh, the corresponding uh, corresponding expression uh, to zero okay and from the from there we will uh, we will uh, determine we will determine the expression for w we will determine the expression for b okay so similar this is similar to the uh, difference of gaussian where uh, where we uh, minimize and maximize a function okay by uh, by getting the partial derivative so in case of in case of uh, laplacian also you have seen that uh, second either for second order derivative or first order derivative we obtain the partial derivative uh, in terms of uh, some variable okay so here we also here uh, we also have the uh, uh, same uh, condition where uh, we obtain the partial derivative of this lagrangian uh, expression with respect to w and with respect to b since w has to be minimized and b has to be maximized okay now we will expand this equation we call this equation 1 okay w l of w comma b half of w dot w summation of alpha i y i w dot x i plus b minus 1 okay now we will expand now we will take the partial derivative with respect to with respect to w okay so dl by dw what we will obtain here for half of for half of w dot w what we will obtain here so here we will obtain w okay let me expand this function expression first half of w dot w minus summation of alpha i y i alpha i y i w dot x i minus summation of alpha i alpha i y i b plus summation of alpha i okay now we will obtain dl partial derivative of this lagrangian expression with respect to w okay so this becomes w okay and this summation of alpha is independent of w therefore this becomes zero this is this terms is also independent of independent of w this becomes zero and uh, for this term we will write alpha i y i x i okay and here i will vary from 1 to m where m
Any questions from here? If you have any questions, you can ask me now. Otherwise, uh, we will discuss uh, the remaining uh, part of this topic in the next class. The one will be last class. Last class, uh, you have got the notice for NSM exam. Yes, from 11, we have exam, sir. No, no, you have got the notice. No notice, but in academic plan, they are mentioned 11, and our coordinator is also saying that from 11, you have exams. Exam. Okay, so if uh, your NSAM exam will start from 11, then uh, we can have the last class on uh, Friday morning. One more class uh, we can have on Friday morning from 10 o'clock. So we will complete this uh, remaining part of this topic on support vector machine. Can you share the slides? Uh, yes. Can you share the slides? Slides? Yes, sir. No, no, only, uh, only uh, I can, I can uh, give you some, uh, I can give you some uh, papers on, uh, on this topic or study material. I have some study materials on this topic. Okay. I will send you. Okay, sir. So from uh, pattern classification, uh, uh, the support vector machines, linear discriminant functions, okay, linear discriminant function uh, will be there. And uh, one more topic uh, we will discuss in the next class. So uh, let me complete this uh, topic first, okay? And then uh, we will go for the another pattern classification technique. Uh, which is obviously uh, supervised learning techniques. So that to be discussed in the next next class. Okay. Okay, that's all for today.